Hi everyone and welcome to our presentation on improving injury surveillance for ag forestry and fishing using machine learning applications. My name is Erica Scott and I'm the principal investigator and I'm presenting this information along with Leanne Hirabayashi, Senior Research Coordinator of the Northeast Center for Occupational Health and Safety in Agriculture, Forestry and Fishing. So why do we need injury surveillance? I think many of us know the challenges that we face in accurately tracking injury in agriculture, forestry, and commercial fishing. And while there have been attempts to do this in the past, and while these industries are still included with some nationally um, compiled surveys and, and research, there still are large gaps in the data which we need to try and fill. And we need to try to do that in a way that is cost effective, in a way that we can continually gather data over time. So as the cartoon shows, it is a bit like a needle in a haystack. Our surveillance system utilizes existing administrative data set in a passive manner. We're looking at pre-hospital care reports, also known as ambulance runs, and hospitalization data, consisting of inpatient, outpatient, and emergency department information. We're hoping to develop a method to utilize the free text in a more efficient manner through machine learning methods, ultimately reducing the cost of the surveillance system. The end users include our own center, stakeholders, trainers across the Northeast, and other folks. Our case definition surrounds around traumatic injury. We're looking for a traumatic injury event or an acute exposure that is from an agricultural forestry or fishing source that occurs while on an agricultural forestry or fishing location or while you're doing an ag forestry or fishing activity, which is severe enough to require medical attention. However, it's important to note that if an activity at the time is not agricultural, forestry, or fishing related, such as riding a skateboard or grilling on a barbecue grill, those type of events are excluded from this system. So we look at the population under surveillance. We're looking at ag, forestry, and fishing workers across the Northeast. And here you'll see our region from West Virginia up to Maine. The different colors in the map indicate where we have gotten approval for data, where we have a data in house and we've received that data and blue indicates that we are seeking approval. I want to give you some examples of the type of information we can get particularly from the free text and these generally focus on the pre-hospital care reports. So an example here for agriculture and highlighted in white indicates the injury event and the source of injury. So a patient foot was trapped in a corn chopper the patient was attempting to kick out a piece of wood from the corn chopper and it, his foot got pulled in. So from there, you really get a good sense, more so than in some other types of data, what exactly happened there. And of course, in addition to that, we have the information from the actual PCR event related to the medical outcomes of that. So an example for logging that we can look at is when a patient was stuck and trapped by a falling tree and this notes that this patient was freed by his coworkers. So that's a great indicator that this is an occupational injury. Further, it goes on to describe how this patient is extricated from the woods. And it really shows the involvement and in how far they have to travel in. So it gives a sense also of the timing for these injury events. Now let's bring up this particular patient's uh, corresponding hospital record. So we can see here that from the ICD uh, codes, the external cause of injury codes, we can see he was struck by a falling object. He has several broken bones. Um, however, what we don't know here, if we just looked at his hospital record, is that this is a logger. So by combining the two data sources, we have a much richer uh, narrative to what actually happened to this particular patient. Now moving on to an example for fishing, we can also see here the detail in the injury event. So this particular patient was a worker on a lobster boat using a fishing knife. It describes the injury that he obtained while using that fishing knife. And if we go again on to connecting it with the appropriate hospitalization record, we can see those ECOs. He has an open wound on his finger, accident in place NEC. NEC says not elsewhere classified. So for this data set, there wasn't a way to say fishing boat. Uh, we do get the information from the hospital record that is civilian activity for income, so that's a great indicator for work relatedness. And then we see E9203, knife, sword, or dagger. So for many of us, we would not have ever guessed without the additional information from the PCR that that knife is a fishing knife and it's a commercial lobsterman. 
So for machine learning, we have to start somewhere, and that somewhere was coding a corpus of about 50,000 records by hand, visually inspecting all of them, and assigning our determinations on whether they were an ag forestry or fishing case and how certain we were about that. So we have a system that goes between a one, two, and a three, a one being a true case, a two being a traumatic injury that we suspect to be industry related, and a three being industry related where we can suspect it's a traumatic or acute event. Now we're using that corpus of data to build and train our data sets using naive Bayes machine learning methods. We're able to do this by moving beyond SAS, which we've used before for this project, and moving into the world of Python and using the Natural Language Toolkit and some other machine learning processes. So by stemming and lemmatizing the words, we're cutting off and taking advantage of looking at particular grammar structure and, and cleaning up that data a lot so we have a lot more power in what we're doing. In addition, we've brought in a computer scientist to guide our work, and we've also employed with a contract coder that's very well versed in Python to do this work. So here you can sort of see the start process to the end process of how we move through the different parts of this, of this project. So it goes from the very beginning where we download the free hospital care report data from the state EMS portals. And this, of course, is after we've received official approval and gone through all of the IRB uh, necessary to obtain those data. And then we deduplicate those records, making sure that we only have single patient records as we should have. And then we go ahead and apply exclusion rules. So we're taking out any records that have a destination type of nursing home, for example, or have a dispatch reason of a transfer, lifting, or intercept. Next, we move on and we have over 1,300 specialized expressions that we also exclude. So for instance, if we're looking for a tr an agriculture related case for tractors, we would want to exclude every time the word tractor trailer is present in the free text. And you can imagine for motor vehicle incidents, that's quite often. So things like tractor trailer or other commonly used expressions that may contain an agricultural keyword are excluded. This includes a whole plethora of road and street names. So a whole variety of our keywords with street and road and avenue and circle after them, for example. Or if you think about some place like a business like Dress Barn, uh, we would not want to be looking at those type of records. So that's just a little example of the types of exclusion criteria that we apply. Then we go ahead and we search for the stems of the keywords. And this process is all done in Python now. So whether or not a stem is found dictates which way we take on our flowchart here. And if a stem is found, it gets set aside and has the uh, machine learning prediction model applied to it. If it meets the 90% true positive threshold, we then review it visually by our team of trained coders. This visual inspection happens with two trained coders that are all reviewing the same cases. Therefore, it gets really detailed scrutiny. Once those duo of coders has reviewed it, a lead coder, either the principal investigator or the lead project coordinator, is reviewing those as well. So we're really certain that those choices that we've made are, are the way they should have been done. So this type of information gets fed back into the machine learning algorithms on a routine basis. And as we go through each iterative process for a given year of data, we also add more things to the exclusion expression list as they come up. So we may find that a new business starts that has the word dairy in it, for example. Those get added in, so it then again um, provides more of the cases we're looking for and less of the cases that we're not interested in. As a final step for all of the cases that we're interested in for the surveillance system, so traumatic or injury or acute events related to ag, forestry, and fishing, we apply the occupational injury and illness classification system coding scheme on those, as well as assigning FAIC codes, so the Farm and Agricultural Injury, injury Classification Scheme. And we also apply other codes that are helpful for us, knowing is the uh, injury itself, was it unintentional, was it intentional, self-harm, was it a violent interaction, for example, or the injury severity, was it a fatal injury or a non-fatal injury. Looking at the OICS codes, this is an example of a screenshot of our database, and you can see that we are able to apply the nature of the injury and the body part, as well as the source of injury and the injury event type. 
And beyond that, you can see some of the other data that's brought in there. So for instance, in certain states, we have the primary method of payment. And this one, for example, shows workers' compensation. All really helpful things for us to be looking at. And not only for the classification schemes, we're talking mainly about pre-hospital care reports here, but in our uh, parallel research using hospital records, we are also creating crosswalks between the external cause of injury codes and the OICS coding system. So at the very end, we can compare all of these data together. So looking at the primary preliminary results from our machine learning methodology, you can see here the receiver operator curve on the left hand side. And we were pretty pleased with the area under the curve being 0.95. So for these, if we reviewed a little over 5,000 records, uh, we would have about 95% of all the true records, which is much faster than reviewing 25,000 records, for example. The same here when we're looking at one, two, and three cases. So these are true cases plus the ones that we suspect to be agriculturally related. Um, very similar results here. So again, if we were reviewing a little over 5,000 records, we'd have nearly 95% of those cases, so about 150 records, as opposed to having to review 25,000 records. So the time savings is huge, and the reward is still quite great. So what's improving these algorithms? To a large degree, it is those exclusion criteria. now that we have imported so many years of data into, into really tightening up that initial algorithm. And what we've noticed is now that we've used five years of data to create this, this uh, machine learning algorithm, each iterative year is making less of a difference over the exclusion criteria. Using free text certainly has challenges. And we recognize that we're not identifying all the cases of interest, that some things will be slipping through the cracks. However, we do feel confident that we are capturing many of the records that would have otherwise gone completely unknown to us. Spelling errors are a huge issue, and we intend to deal with that in the future, but uh, we don't even get into that uh, process right now. And there is a whole um, research area just in that, uh, looking at spelling errors and how people type and whether autocorrect makes any differences in that, for example. Spacing issues is also an, an issue where if two words are merged together, potentially it can't stem properly, for example. And semantics, some people write things one way and another, and it may be in, mean the same thing. So it's, uh, it's not a perfect science at times. And as you may imagine, even going through 5,000 records still can be time consuming. It took a long time to create that gold standard data set that we used to start off the machine learning model. But we're definitely seeing the rewards from that insofar that as an ongoing surveillance system to code a given year's data from a given state, the input actually is uh, quite, quite manageable for a surveillance system, and the outcome of the data quality is quite good. Our future plans uh, include always refining that machine learning algorithm as we receive more data and input more data into the system, looking at how we can apply this potentially to the uh, medical record systems, and looking at regional analyses. So we're starting with Maine and New Hampshire, and we can test does the algorithm then work on, say, Vermont's data, for instance? And can we not only identify cases, but then can we start using the machine learning algorithms to assign these OICS codes to a certain degree? And NASH has already done some work on the auto-coding uh, for OICS. The other issue is dealing with misspellings and cleaning all of that up and how else we can better utilize that free text. And finally, looking beyond our naive Bayes models, and we have tested other models beyond naive Bayes just to make that clear, but really getting into full narrative tokenization. Can we take an, uh, advantage of the whole corpus and body of that free text in which are cases and not cases over just using specific words in that free text? Here you can go to learn a little bit more about some of the research that we've done, uh, some of our more recent publications on this research project. And lastly, should you Lastly, should you be interested, please contact us. We would love to talk shop, so to speak. And you can contact Leanne or myself, Erica. Both of our emails are on there, as well as our telephone number. So thanks again for watching, and take care.